This is lesson 1.1 point B, skewed data and outliers. There are three things that I want you to get out of this lesson. Um, the first thing is that given a set of data, I want you to be able to identify whether it's left or right skewed, or if it's just a normal distribution, bell-shaped. Secondly, I want you to understand how extreme values called outliers can and will affect the shape and mean of your data. And lastly, I want you to be able to know how to use the embedded calculator in your assignment coming up. So I'll show you that. So let's look at this first slide. Outliers are values that lie outside the other values. And you can see the outlier in each of these examples, different ways to um, describe them. So in the first one, you have a, a line um, that is plotted with the dots and there is one point that is outside the line, clearly an outlier. Here you have a line plot and you have an outlier way far away from the rest of the data. And then you might have something like this where you just see numbers and the one is definitely not similar to the other numbers. It is an outlier. So when we click data, sometimes there are values that are far away from the main group of data. What do we do with them? How do we treat them? What do we know about them? We have to have an understanding of what they do to our data. Here's an example, a long jump example. You have a new coach and he has been working with the athletes to improve their long jump distance. And here are the results. So you can see that everybody gained 0.15 meters, 0.11, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to Sam. Unfortunately, Sam got worse. So if we plot those numbers on a number line, you can see that everybody else is clustered here together, all improving, whereas Sam is dramatically um, far away from them. He has reduced his distance by quite a bit. So let's calculate the average, the mean. We're adding up all the values, dividing by how many we have, and we end up with an average mean of a negative 0.01 meters. What does that mean? Well, that means that on average, we have a reduction in the distance that everybody jumped of negative 0.01. Not very good, right? So is the coach useless? Well, clearly if you look at the data, everybody's improved except Sam. Sam's an outlier. So really is the coach useless? This is where you have to examine your data, see what you have, and figure out what that outlier means. So let's, for example, remove Sam's result. So if we redo the mean, and you can see we have all the numbers without Sam, we're going to take Sam out of it, and we're going to recalculate the mean, and look, we get a new value of 0.08 meters. Hey, if you take Sam out, then everybody did improve, the coach looks much, much, much better. So truly, is that more representative than the other mean? But is that fair? Can we just get rid of values we don't like? I guess the key really here is to think about why that value is there. Why is that outlier there? What's causing that outlier? Um, sometimes it is normal to have high and low values. If you think about people and their height, is it normal to have females that are seven feet tall? Probably not. However, there are females that are seven feet tall. If you were to plot the average height of females, those females would be outliers. So there's different reasons. Now let's go back to the long jump. We find out that Sam was feeling sick that day and it definitely is not the coach's fault that he was sick. So he had a bad day. Um, essentially his data is not representative of what he really could do. So as long as we can if we take that value out, as long as we can explain why we took it out, then we can be justified in taking that out. Otherwise, we need to leave it in and then explain why that value is in and, and know the effect that it has on the shape of the data and the average, the mean. So we saw how outliers affected the mean, but what about the median or mode? We didn't examine those. If we include SAM, our median is 0.085. You can see that right here. If we take Sam out, our median is 0.11. It went up a little bit, but very insignificant. And really that's more of a factor of the new middle value 
is now in a different location because we took a value out. The mode, on the other hand, those have not changed. They've stayed the same. They're both 0.06. So the mode and the median didn't change very much. They stayed the same. So the outliers have the biggest effect on the mean, not the median or the mode. So now let's look at the shapes of so if you recall from an earlier lesson, there are three categories that describe the shape of the data. There's symmetric, which is your normal bell curve. There is left skewed. And there is right skewed. Oops. We can use that classification for any set of data. So let's look at our symmetric distribution. The key thing to point out on the symmetric distribution is that the mean is equal to the median, as well as the mode in this example. On this symmetric distribution, the tails on the left and on the right are very symmetric, um, and you can think of this almost as a grading scale. Down here are your low values, so maybe these are your Fs. There are very few people getting Fs, but typically there are more people getting Cs, and then B's, D's, C's, B's, and then there are very few people getting A's. So that is your symmetric distribution. Here's another way to represent that, and that is with a box and whiskers plot. If you remember that the middle line on a box and whiskers plot represents your median. And let's increase that circle. So here is your median, and it's always going to be halfway between your quartiles. Out here to the left whisker is your lowest value, and up here to the right whisker is always going to be your highest value. All right, so let's move on to a right skewed distribution. So distributions can be right skewed or they can be left skewed. The key to this is understanding what this is over here. The reason that we call this right skewed is because there is an outlier out here which is skewing your mean meaning that we have such a high number here that it's causing our average, our mean, to be greater than our median. So if we write that out, and I will use x bar to represent our mean, our mean is greater than our median when you have data that is right skewed. Another thing that's important to notice that if you were to calculate the first quartile, the median, if you'll notice this distance in here, is shorter than the distance out here. The median is closer to the first quartile, which is here, than it is to the third quartile. Let's look at a summary now. So we've got three different shapes of data. We've got symmetric, and as we said in a symmetric graph, we can say that our average, or our mean, is going to be equal to our median, which in most cases is also equal to our mode. When we're looking at skewed right or skewed left, now we are going to be comparing. So we're going to be comparing our mean or our average to our median in both of these. So in the first example, we're skewed right. So here we have an outlier. So what's happening to our average? Our average is is gaining in value. Our average is gaining in value. So instead of being equal to our median, our average is now going to be greater than our median because our average is going to be moving to the right because of this outlier. In this far right example, now we have an outlier here on the left. Here's our outlier. So what would that do to our average? Well, that's going to pull our average down. That's going to decrease our average. So in that case, our average, or our mean, will be less, less than our median. All right, let's do an example. So here we have a set of data, and we want to determine whether this data is symmetric, skewed right, or skewed left, and we want to be able to justify our answer. So in order to do that, I need to get some values. I need to find the mean, the median, standard deviation, and also maybe the first and third quartile to give me a better picture. So here is your embedded calculator that you will have on your practice assignment. And what you do is you just enter in the data by typing it in. So I will type in 27, comma, without any spaces, 28, 
comma 30 and I will continue on so on and so forth until I have all the data entered. Okay, I've typed in all my data and now I'm just going to press calculate and voila, it is that easy. It pulls up how many pieces of data you have in case you need to verify that you've entered all the information. It gives you your mean or average and the standard deviation. That's all we'll be using from this calculator. So let's go ahead and record our information in the spaces provided. So our mean comes to 41.14. Our median we don't know yet. Our standard deviation they're saying is 10 0.65 and remember that just represents how spread out the data is so it's good to know um, that spread and you can look at the data and see that wow we've got 62 up here on the upper end and we've got 27 down here on the lower end the data is pretty spread out so therefore we have a fairly large standard deviation so that's good for measuring the spread of your data so now let's go figure out how to find the median and the first and third quartile well, the median, remember, is your middle number. If we have all the values in order, which we do, we just find the middle number. So we would count down until we'd get to 7, and 41 is at 7. And then we would count from the right side until we get to 7, which is 42. Those are our two middle numbers. So how do we find the median? Add those together, take the average, and we would get 41.5. So anytime there's two numbers, add them together and take the average. So now we have the median. Now let's figure out how to find the first and third quartile. Well, the first quartile is really just the median of the lower half of the data, the middle number. And we know there's seven pieces of data here, so it's going to be data number four. So one, two, three, four, 32 is going to be our first quartile. And then we can do the same thing with the third quartile. It'll be our middle number. So let's count and find the fourth piece of data. So we have 42, 43, 44, 46 is number four, and that's our third quartile. All right, we found a bunch of key numbers. Now let's analyze this and draw a conclusion as to what type of uh, shape this graph would have. So here's what I've done is I've put the data into a box and whiskers plot and you can see that it's very hard to tell where this median is. Is this median closer to the left or is it closer to the right the quartile, the left or the right quartile, the first or the third quartile I should say. So here's all of our data and let's look. So it's Mm, maybe I would say closer to the first quartile just from here but if I actually draw in where those are Right here is my first quartile. My third quartile I said was 46, which is here. And then it's clear that this is in fact closer to my third quartile. So we can conclude that the data is skewed left. So here's our two reasons. Comparing the mean and the median, the mean is less than the median by a very, very small difference. So we should look at how close the median is to our quartiles. Well, the median is closer to the third quartile, we said. Um, so therefore, we can say that this is going to be left skewed. All right, so now you're ready to move on and try the practice assignment. That is the next page. And now you know how to use your online calculator and see if you can analyze the data like we did here today.